Man, it, sometimes there's things that you can plan for um, when you're writing sermons or when you're preparing for things. And then there's, sometimes there's just moments that they just or, organically happen. Um, and tonight I feel like that. Uh, as I was praying and thinking through this, uh, Colton shared a ministry moment and, and talked a lot about uh, God wants more for you. And in these lyrics of the songs that we were singing, God wants more for us as well. And uh, tonight is, is that. The title of the message is There Is More, or Wait, There's More. And I know for me, uh, growing up is hard, right? I don't know, maybe you figured it out, but I have not, right? And someone in here in this room, if you have figured out what it looks like to be an adult, please write a book and uh, tell, it, get, tell it to me because I'm struggling. I'm trying to figure out what this looks like. And so I'm one of those guys where uh, probably, I don't know, when I was like 15, I wanted to be 18. Like when I wanted to be in, when I was in middle school, I wanted to be in high school. Like when I wanted to be in high school, I wanted to be in college. And when I wanted to be in college, I wanted the job. And then I got the job and then I didn't want the job anymore. Like that, that's the type of person that I am. And uh, there was always people in my life that always told me, they always said, uh, you know what? Don't rush to be an adult, because once you're an adult, then uh, things get hard. You got to pay bills, you got to do all these things, and I'm hard-headed, right? So I just didn't listen, but I always felt like there was people in my life that told me all these things, and maybe I just pushed it off to the side. See, there was about six years ago, I was, at a, I was back in college, and one of my best friends at the time, his name was Jake. We called him Jesus Jake. Uh, I don't know if you guys have any people like this in your life. Imagine this like six foot four, tall, lanky white kid uh, from Indiana, and uh, he moved down to uh, Florida, like overly charismatic, you know, always had a word for someone. He was always the guy who just was full of energy, right? He was the, the encouraging guy on campus, and this is like my best friend at the time. And so I'm like six years ago, I'm probably about two or three years into my Christian faith, and at this moment, it was like the first time that I had gotten into a spot where I was ran into like a, a crossroad, right? And maybe you guys have been there in your life before. Now, you're kind of growing in your faith a little bit, but then there comes these moments where all of a sudden you're like, where is God or what's happening? And maybe in your adult life, you think, hey, I've got this thing figured out. And then all of a sudden you're like hands up in the air. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what's left and I don't know what's right. Well, that's what happened to me in my Christian faith at this moment, right? So I'm like two years into my faith. And I remember looking at my buddy, Jake, and I say, Jake, I don't really know like where I'm at or what's happening. At this time, like, Oceans was a song that was, like, the, the ultimate, like, banger. Like, if you heard Oceans, you start crying. Like, that was me. But, like, I was in the spot where I could hear Oceans, and I'm not crying anymore. Like, I'm in three Bible studies, and, like, I'm not growing as much as I used to. I'm coming to, like, first, second, and third service at the time. And, like, God's not speaking to me anymore. He's not really moving in my life like I thought he was. And I get to these moments in my life, and I'm at this crossroad where you know, I've been showing up. I raised my hand, right? I did all the different spots. I, 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 I came, I came, I came, I came, I came. And then it felt like God disappeared in my life. And I don't know, maybe somewhere in this room, you guys are there. Maybe somewhere in this room, probably majority of you guys are walking with Jesus. You guys have been followers, right? You came into the room on a Tuesday. I told you, close your eyes. You raised your hand. You joined the small group. You got on the serving team. And then all of a sudden, you're just like, What? Right, like may, maybe that's you, but my buddy Jake, in that moment, as I was sitting there telling him this, I said, Jake, I just don't know what to do. I don't feel like I can feel God anymore. And I think right there in that moment, he, adjust, he, he looked me in my eyes, and he's about 6'4", so he, he grabbed me on my shoulder right here, and he says, Darian, you graduated. There's more. And he read me this verse in Hebrews, and he says, Hebrews 6, 1, and 3. So let us stop going over the basic teachings about Christ again and again. Let us go on and instead become mature in our, uh, in our understanding. Surely we don't need to start again with fundamental importance of repenting from evil deeds and placing our faith in God. You don't need further instruction about baptism and the laying of the hands, the resurrection of the dead and the eternal judgment. And so God willing, we will move forward to further understandings. Reading this was like a call out for me, right? This crossroad, two years I'm into my faith, and a lot of it was emotion. A lot of it was, a, it was kind of fun. A lot of it was just new to me. And then I came to this spot where it wasn't that much fun anymore. 
where it actually became a drag to come to church. My friends weren't showing up as much, and I started having to take this, this introspective step back and realize and say, why? And this scripture right here, it was like this OMG moment that dropped into my head and started saying, wait a second, there is more. I had to take the step and realize and say, there is a step further beyond basic teachings about talking about basic teachings over and over again. And so let me go beyond that into the mature, mature standings. And so tonight, I want us to take that step together. Because I believe that majority of the people in here, you know who God is. You've been coming to church for a while. If I were to do the, the sword drill, you would probably tell me all the verses. You could probably read off all the lyrics on, this, on, the, on the screen and you could tell me what's next. But I believe for a lot of us in here, we've been sitting in the same spot. And we're just waiting and waiting and waiting. But here tonight, the challenge is that we're not waiting anymore. We are now active and we're moving. We just came out of a conference called Moving Forward. And that doesn't require for a lot of God right now. It's requiring a lot on us. For us to take the step. And so it's not going to be something tonight where it's going to be like, woohoo! It's going to be a lot more like, hey, there's something in my pocket that I need to give out. There's something in my foot that it's, it's causing me to maybe question. It's causing me to hurt a little bit. And so let me remove this rock out of my shoe so that I can continue to move forward. And so this is going to hopefully challenge us into a spot that we can say, I'm moving in the direction where God is now calling me to. Because he's been calling us in this direction for a very, very, very long time. But we sometimes have just been stuck in the same spot, waiting and waiting and waiting and hoping that someone else might give us the answer. But no, 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 there is more for you. There is more for you. There is more for you. And tonight, hopefully we begin to unpack that. So where we're at in this process, right? For you guys that understand and know who Jesus is, there's a spot called justification. So justification is an act of God whereby he pronounces a sinner to be, a righteous, to be righteous because of the sinner's faith in Christ, right? So justification has to do with God's declaration about the person, not any change within the person. God has called us justified, right? God has called us justified. So there's multiple steps in this process. The first, you come to know Jesus, that's justification. And in Romans 5.1, it says, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ justification, just know this, justification does not make us holy, right? Justification is just the first step. The process that comes following after that, where things start to shift and things start to make sense and requires us to take the next step is the process of sanctification. The actual change between holiness and the person occurs between sanctification. And so God, now in this moment, creates this process inside of our lives. And the sanctification process is challenging. It's filled with highs. It's filled with lows. It's filled with confusions. It's filled with sadness. It's filled with maybe a spiritual high, like coming off of a conference. But then it's filled with a spiritual drought and coming through the valley and being in the wilderness. And what we do and what, how we respond in these moments of sanctification is very, very important. The sanctification is processes where we live now, and this is how we grow. God's will for us is to be sanctified. That's 1 Thessalonians 4.3. God's will for us is to be sanctified. Basically, what I'm telling you right now is that you can't just stay at the justification process. I raise my hand, my eyes are closed. You have to take the step. And in that sanctification process, it requires a lot of things that maybe aren't popular. It requires a lot of uh, dying to yourself. It requires a lot of moments in your life where you have to say, here's the mirror and I'm asking for something. And it's going to take accountability. It's going to take challenges. And it's going to take some tears. And it's going to take some sacrifice. But in this sanctification process, it is God's will for us. The word saint right? You guys know that. Maybe you've been coming here. Saint, that's where we get sanctification from, right? So saint, sanctification, you guys, you guys get that. But the change that begins to happen in us in this moment that where we are justified, 
to the moment where we are glorified, that's how we are made holy. You guys tracking me? You feel what I'm saying? That moment of justification to the moment where we die, that is the sanctification process. But once we die, that's how we are made holy and we are now glorified. Right? So there's three, the justification, the sanctification, and the glorification process. So in and through these moments right here, it's a challenge because we know, oh man, I got to be holy. And you're like, oh, well, I got to be perfect and you can't be perfect. Yes, yes, you will never be perfect. But we strive through the sanctification process, which means we are repealing, we're taking off, we're removing the sin, we're removing the darkness, we're removing the things in our life that no longer look like Jesus so that we can be sanctified, and so that we can be glorified. You fallen? 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And this is not just like behavior modification, right? So a lot of times we think in the sanctification process, what happens or what that means is that we're just going to stop cussing. We're just going to stop drinking. We're just going to stop having sex. We're going to stop watching porn. We're just going to stop doing all these things. But that's just behavior modification. That's not us taking things off. It's just saying, I don't want to do it anymore because I want to be a good Christian. I don't want to be judged by my small group. I don't want to maybe uh, let someone know what's on my private story. I don't want anybody to see me on TikTok or on Instagram. So we start telling all these people, hey, I'm not drinking anymore. I'm good. Oh, I'm not, I'm not having sex anymore. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. But that's, that's not sanctification, right? Because when we're sanctified, we are actually removing the sin out of our life and we're running towards something so that we could be glorified because we're trying to pursue holiness. And that's hard. And I'm telling you right now, I'm in the sanctification process. Every single person in here is in the sanctification process. There is no one that is farther. There is no one that on here on this earth that has reached the spot of holiness. And all of us, we live in these, this challenge, right? And I'm, I'm telling you right now, it is difficult, but it is possible for us to chase something that is far greater because God has called us to this. We've read this, right? God has called us to this. And I'm telling you right now, God is calling you for more. He is calling you for more. He is. And I can speak that generically because I know God's will. God's will for your life is more. And when he doesn't say more, he says, keep going and keep going and keep going. Because sometimes when you're in the drought, you're in the wilderness and you don't know where to go, God's still saying, keep going, keep going, keep going. Because trust me, let me lead you. Let me point you. And in those moments and in those processes and in those maybe reflection ideas, we have to rely on God because we know that we want to be holy and we want to look like him. And so that requires for us to die to our plan, die to our thoughts, die to our ideas, die to what everybody else has told us because we know that we are to pursue righteousness, holiness, and the will of God, which is for us to be sanctified. God wants us more mature. He wants more faith. He wants more passion. And he wants more desire. God wants to be active in and through us. And we can't allow for God to be active in and through us when we have hands closed. Instead, we have to have hands open. Instead of our pockets being closed, we have to have them open. Instead of our, our ideas of what our life and our future and our relationships look like, we have to have them open so that God can work in and through us and push us through the process of sanctification. And so we all live in these moments filled with highs and filled with lows. But I'm telling you right now that there's a spot that I think is right there in the middle. And if you've ever been there, it's like this, this waiting game or it's like this uh, uh, just obedient stage of your life where you're open to going to go live in a car or move into Mississippi like you're open to go making a hundred thousand dollars, but you're also open to just living off of whatever God has in store for you next. And I hope 
that every single one of us in this room, we get to a spot where we're just right in the middle, where we don't just run off the emotional high, but we're not just always questioning and being here on the bottom end. We're just right there, just being obedient, waiting for God, because that's God's will for us. And God wants us to live and be like him. That's what he wants. He's given us the example through the scriptures and through his word. And he says, hey, be like me. And in 1 John 2, 6, he says, whoever says he abides in me ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. Whoever says he abides in him, right? So the majority of us in this room, we raise the hand. God, I, I got it in my bio. <laughs> I'm telling everybody that I, I wear the t-shirt. So that this is you, this is God telling you, whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way which he, Jesus, walked. And I don't need to go through the list and attributes of how Jesus walked. You guys know that. And that is the process of sanctification. Because we can't be perfect. There's only one perfect one. But that's the standard. The way that Jesus walked. The problem with this, what makes this hard to obtain or reach is sin. And so we either run from sin or we run to sin, right? And so sin distracts us from the glorified part of where we get the chance to meet Jesus, where we're holy and righteous. So the sin that's inside of us, it removes us from these moments where we can't allow our, our eyes or our pockets or our lifestyle or our job, wherever it is at. So we get distracted from it. And so when we run from sin, we're, we're running in the process of sanctification. When we run to sin, wherever that may be, it could be pride, it could be ego, it could be gossip, it could be whatever is inside of you. When we run to that, we are running away. We retreat. And you guys have heard me preach sermons on this all day long about isolation, running backwards. But no, 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 no. Tonight, today, right now, we run forward in the process so that when we get to the finish line and the trumpet sound, we know that we are holy and righteous and glorified. And my hope tonight is that as a ministry, as a group, friends, small group, wherever we at, that we as a whole in this moment, because I know there's so many transitions happening right now, right? In a month or so, 12th graders are getting ready to come in. Maybe in two or three months, one of you guys is going to get engaged or going to get married. You're going to get a new job. You're going to get a new house. You're going to move away from Southeast Texas. You're not going to be in PYA anymore. And I want you guys to know that at least just right now in this moment where everything is moving and everything is questionable, if we could just all together be on the same page and move together in unity and say we as a group will move forward in taking the steps to look more like Jesus. And my hope over the next three or four months that we would be able to take action, proactive steps to move into the process where we could say we are removing sin, we are removing doubt, we are removing confusion because we are fully following after God. And just like what Hebrews was talking about, right? So we've, we've been in here for long enough where it's great and it's awesome. But for the people in here that are believers and you know the future and you know the end of the plan, man, there is more for you. And I believe that tonight we start that. We let go of checkbox Christianity. We let go of the idea of I just came so I can get marked on attendance. I let go of the idea I can just serve because I'm just going to make me get into a good friend group. I let go of the idea of I just came to conference so I could be in the photo booth. I let go of the idea that I just want to show up and show up and show up and consume and consume and consume. But today and tonight, hopefully as a group, we all get on the same page and say that this is no longer on my small group leader. This is no longer on the pastor. This is no longer on anybody else because God is calling me, you, you, you for more. And this idea of consume, consume, I fall into that category. Because every Sunday I sit there and I'm like, come on, Reg, give me something good today. And you know what happens? And then when I don't feel like Ray gave me something good, I get on YouTube and I go watch Judah Smith or I get on YouTube or I go watch Craig Rochelle and I go find my favorite YouTube pastor. I'm like, feed me, feed me, feed me. But you know what God gave me 
the word of God. And so Darian, feed myself. Whoever's in here, feed yourself. There is nothing overtly spiritual about me. I'm just the head communicator of people 18 plus. That's it. Do I know the word of God? I hope so. But is the Bible hard? And I, Do I have a hard time understanding it? Absolutely. Do I get confused by scripture? Absolutely. And so there is no shame in not knowing. And I'm not telling you, hey, it's on you to go figure it out. No, 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 no. I'm telling you right now, it is, it is on you to go take the next step. And so ask a question. Man, I'm here. Your small group is here. But they are not the main person in your life to be like, you need to do, come to me. Tell me how to do it. Consumer Christianity tells us that. In the Western church world, we love doing that. It's like, man, that's the word. I'm, I'm going to the church up the road because they preach better. <laughs> they weren't doing that 3,000 years ago. They didn't have cars. What, you know what they did? They sat there and they worked through it. And they, they challenged each other. And they pushed one another. And so when people were, were struggling in their faith, Hopefully a guy like Jesus, Jake, to me, he said, hey, there's more for you, Darian. And I hope that you're in community that someone could say, hey, there's more for you. But it doesn't have to be me. And it doesn't have to be your small group leader. It doesn't have to be your go team leader. Man, I hope you get someone in your life that can mature, that is mature and that can disciple you and point you in the right direction. But I want to challenge you that God has more for you. And so once we take that step, right, it's, it is hard, right? Because you're working, you're probably asking yourself the question, well, Darian, I, I do want to be a mature believer, and I do want to go deeper in my faith, but I don't really have time. I work 60 hours a week. I got a girlfriend, or I'm married. I'm trying to juggle out what it looks like to try to be, you know, some rich and famous person, or I'm trying to buy a house, or I'm trying to get an apartment, or I'm really trying to move off to the next city, and I'm trying to balance all these things in my life that I want to have God in me, or I want to make time for God, but like some days I just, I just get busy. Hey, I'm with you guys. I get that, but this is how we live. This is how we move. This is how we take our next step. It's called spiritual disciplines, and I'm going to give you about six of them. There's so many of them out there, but I've written about six that I believe in our context of young adults that as a group here tonight, if we can hold on to these six spiritual disciplines, I truly, truly, truly believe that if we live this way in our lifestyles, that we will move in a direction that looks like we are trying to pursue God and pursue righteousness and pursue the Holy Spirit to live in and through us. And not just on a first Tuesday or not just on Thursday night or not just on Monday when we have small group, but for the rest of our lives forever and eternity. So the first spiritual discipline that I think that if we can hold on to, man, I, I truly believe this, it's Sabbath. So Sabbath is the day that is blessed by God. It's set aside of rest and worship. The most beautiful and most important practices of Jesus is him finding rest with Sabbath. And we should all strive to model this out, right? So Sabbath for me is a Friday. Many of you guys that are close to me, you know this. Text me or call me on a Friday, I'm probably not going to answer. Now, sometimes I will because it's an emergency and I'm going to like try to get to you. But hopefully I don't answer the phone because I'm resting. So Sabbath for me looks like me just resting and relaxing. So I'm going to the car wash. I'm going to sleep in a little bit. I'm going to clean my whole house. I'm going to probably try to watch some sort of Liberty sporting event or activity. And then I'm going to go with brunch with my wife. And then I'm going to go to dinner with my wife. And I'm going to rest. And I'm just going to relax. I'm going to probably get into the Word a little bit. I might watch a sermon. But for the most of the day, I'm just taking a step back to reflect on what God has done in and through my life. And I just want to say thank you to that. And so I want to honor that with rest. That's a Sabbath. The second is fasting. Fasting is the willingness to abstain from food for a period of time so that we can feed off of the Holy Spirit. So this is biblical fasting. There's multiple types of, I mean, there's intermittent fasting. There's uh, all this, I'm not talking about that stuff. I'm talking about biblical fasting, right? So we, we were staying from food for a period of time. This could be like two hours. This could be 10 hours. It could be two days. It could be 40 days, whatever it is. We've seen Jesus in the, in the wilderness. He went 40 days. Some people have done the Daniel fast. Go you guys, awesome. I'm talking like, Go you. That's great. But I, yeah. So the idea of fasting, spiritual discipline. When we want to feed the Holy Spirit in, in and through our lives, 
The idea of this would be every time we have a hunger and a desire for that food or that thing, we run to prayer. So instead of us longing and desiring the food, we long and desire the word of God or the presence of God or the spirit of God in and through us. The third would be community. Man, these are, these are some, this is good. Community, this is my favorite one or one of them. Uh, we need partners, right, for the journey and a community to help us along the way. Now, community is not a social club. Community is not people in your life that are going to just like high five you and do things. That community, what I'm talking about, are people in your life that are going to challenge you, push you, pray for you, call you out, love you, read scripture with you, pray for you, get into the fire with you. That is community. Everything else Sure, go and do that, but I'm talking about a spiritual discipline that when you're fasting and you're Sabbathing and you're resting and you have community, this is what God is calling. The fourth is scripture. We are all being formed by something, whether that is Google, whether that is your job, whether that is your friendships, whether that is uh, how much money you make. We are all being formed by something. But we should rely on the word of God. And the idea, the word of God, it forms us and it shifts us and it creates us into something more. And in this book, we find life. And in this book, we find hope. And in this book, we find what it looks like to truly be a human being on this earth. And the fifth is serving. We serve because he served. And we serve from overflow. We serve because there was a God who got up on the cross and he served us. And we gave us the ultimate picture of what it looks like to love our neighbor, to look like, and to go to the well. He showed us the picture to, to go to the, to the wedding and, and make people let go of shame and let go of doubt and let go of fears. He served us. And so because he served us, we serve others. And the last spiritual discipline that I want us to hold on to tonight is prayer. This is the center point of our faith. It should be woven into the fabric of our life. It should be woven into the ideas of our mornings, into our weekends, into our daily activities. Prayer is direct connection and direct conversation with the creator of the universe, the one who knows the hairs on your head, the one who knows your last name, the one who knows your deepest, darkest sin, the one who knows the, your, 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 the things that make you cringe and the one that make you fall in love. This is prayer, talking to the creator. And when we pray and when we connect to God, we begin to look more like him. So man, these six disciplines for the next three months, for the next four months, I don't know however long. And, and you know, I'm, I'm even considering maybe just next month we just go through Sabbath. The next month we go through fasting and we just sit in this little season for the next little bit. I don't know, maybe. But these disciplines as a group tonight, for us that believe in Jesus and call him Lord, and for us that know what Christ looks like and what he's done for us, can we hold on to these and challenge us to push us further and faster in our faith? Because we can't do this alone. And when we do these things without the Holy Spirit, it is useless. You can Sabbath, you can fast, you can get in the community, you can read the Bible, you can do all those things, but without the Holy Spirit, there is no point. You're operating in your own strength. You're operating in your own power. You can't do this without God or else it's behavior modification or else it's just you doing what you want to do or else it's just you figuring out how to be strong or be powerful. The Holy Spirit has to and so we have to connect to the Holy Spirit. Spiritually mature people are those who live these disciplines out and they have organized, they've readjusted their entire life so that these, and again, there's many of them. These are just ones that I'm writing and thinking for us as a, as, a, as a group. But you can create your own. But people who are spiritually strong and mature in their faith, they hold on to these spiritual disciplines so that when the high moments come and the low moments come, they've got something to run back to. And what this is, is not just challenging. It is literally unheard of. This is not talked about on TV. This is not talked about in how to be an adult. 
This is not talked about anywhere. This is rewriting your entire idea of what it looks like to live a life. It is challenging. My best friend, Brandon, many of you guys have met him. I was walking through him with about spiritual disciplines and he goes, Darian, that's not just difficult. That is unheard of. He said, this is reordering your priorities. This is reordering what you've been taught. This is rewriting every single thing that we know and think of what it looks like to be a, a person of Jesus in, in, in church. He goes, it sounds crazy, but it sounds exactly where God wants us to be at. And so let us hold on to this. And I looked at him, I said, Brandon, you're so right. But this is pleasing to God. This is where God wants us to live, and this is what God has in store for us. And by practicing these spiritual disciplines consist consistently, we see that God wants more for us. Because we're not relying on the things that we've done. We're relying on the things that God has already finished on the cross for us. And that right there is the freedom that has lived inside of me. And so maybe you are here, you're right, you're that person, you're the new guy. And you're like, what the, is this crazy guy up on the stage talking about? Man, there is freedom. There is freedom in this. Because you realize that you aren't enough. And we sing those songs, I am who you say I am. I have the authority. You are my champion. When I, like these lyrics that we sing, they have power in them. And so tonight, for the person in here who's maybe questioning or maybe confused or maybe filled with just doubt, shame, confusion, and whatever the enemy has placed inside your head, man, I'm here to challenge you and tell you this right now, that God is for you, God does love you, no matter what you've done in the past or what you're gonna do tomorrow, God is on your side and he is choosing and calling you and saying that I want more for you and please commit your life to me. He wants community for you. He wants relationship for you. He wants desire and dwelling with you. And so, man, maybe tonight's your first night and you've got questions, you've got ideas. We're going to have a prayer team that's going to come down here and they want to walk with you. They want to talk with you. We've got small groups that happen every single night of the week except for Fridays. And we've got people that want to do these lives with you. Remember, they're not the person that's going to be the, the, the come all, be all. You can do that. But the whole reason why we're here is to do it together, not alone. And so, man, my, my challenge tonight is, if you're not in community, get in one. If you've got questions, man, you're in the best place. If you're confused about this, or you've got uh, things that you're holding on to that you wanna let go of, would you come out and get prayer? Would you, would you go out of your way to let go of the pride and ask someone to jump into the fire with you? Because I do believe that God wants more for us. So we all pray with me? God, thank you so much for your will. God, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for sending your son and giving us an opportunity, God, tonight to reflect on your word, to reflect on your truth, and to live into a spot, God, where we know that we can't do anything else but chase you. It's not in our power, and it's not in our own strength or our own presence, but it's in yours. And it's in your name I pray.